So, I cannot be the only one to think that Capone is just a great character. I really like him. I mean, who would have thought? When this character was introduced a long time ago, when all the supernovas are introduced, the rookies and stuff, who would have thought that someone like Capone that had like a very basic like gangster design and all that, like a mob boss, would be this amazing, be this epic in terms of just being likable? I really like his character, especially after this chapter. I mean, seriously. Anyone that could say that they don't like Capone after this chapter, I, I don't know what to say to you. Because right now, what Capone just did for his wife and his child and what he said to his child once he lit up oven, I was like, this man, this man is just epic. I mean, just let's process what just happened here, okay? They're being chased by big moms like ships. They're just chasing Capone and all that. He's riding out trying to get over to his wife. And while he's going over there, he, he hears a loudspeaker oven talking on the loudspeaker. He's like, you know, I got got your wife and all that, you know, I'm willing to put her down, it'll be the end of her if you try any funny business, you know, park at the dock and all that, and then come out and all that, and, you know, we'll deal with you right then and there, and as it continued on, Capone basically, he shot, he shot Oven, and you see his head, like, explode and all that, and he falls backwards, and you have this panel focusing on Capone, he's like, you see that, Pez? That's what your daddy likes to do. I'm like, yo! Now, that's obviously not the exact word for word, but you get my point. The way he talked to his child, I mean, he had the gun and all that, he's like, boom, right at the man. I'm like, that, that's epic. That, that, that's legit epic. I really like Capone right now, because that truly just stood out to me, just seeing his character do something like that. I mean, who would have thought he would have this much care for his wife, he had this much care for his subordinates, he had this much care for his child, just all of these things. It makes him for a very good character. I really do love him, and I just never would have thought he would have been this type of guy when he was first introduced. I always loved his design, I just didn't know he would be this type of character, and definitely Oda has done tremendous work with Capone's character. But anyways, though, let's talk about the Luffy stuff. So, Luffy. Luffy is trying to get his observation hockey at the level of Katakuri. Now, this was to be expected. Many of us have already talked about this, but it just it's still hype to see that Luffy is determined now to get at that level with hockey to where he can kind of see into the future. That is pretty amazing and that you know just fuels me with hype right now because when you think about it this has actually been built up for a while let me explain we now know that with hockey if you get to a certain level you can see into the future and this means that there is a possibility a long time ago Thanks to me rewatching One Piece recently, as I've been saying, I've been making videos on, I've been rewatching One Piece anime, and I did go back to see a certain scene in the, uh, you know, One Piece anime, one of my favorite moments. It was the Whitebeard War. And in the Whitebeard War, there is a scene where Luffy's charging towards Mihawk and all of that, and you see Mihawk splash at Luffy, and then Luffy, like, dives his hands down into the ice and all that, and he makes sure he doesn't get him cut off. It's, it looks like he's seeing into the future, or he's predicting it, and at that moment of looking at not knowing our information right now, many would assume just Luffy knew what was going to happen if he continued to fight, and that's why he dived straight down and put his hands into the, you know, the ground and all that, and why everything was fine. But in this case, with this new knowledge we have obtained in this arc, that there is a likely possibility that Luffy could have been seeing a glimpse into the future. Because let's look at that arc and what Luffy is doing. He awakened his hockey. We got to see him knock a bunch of people out in that fight and all that. We also know that hockey, apparently, it grows a lot stronger if you're put into very dire situations. And so in this case, Luffy was probably in his worst moment. Throughout the entirety of this series, that was probably the most stress he's ever been put under throughout One Piece. And he was trying to save Ace. He was doing everything he can. He was standing up to these monsters that just towered over him and he couldn't really fight against and couldn't even take down. He was standing up to monsters. And in that moment, there is a likely possibility, since he was already starting to show signs he was unlocking hockey, that he could have been glimpsing into the future with observation hockey, and that's what he saw when Mihawk tried to attack him. So, Oda might have been building this up for a good long while. This might not have just come out of nowhere, which I highly doubt it would anyways, because this is Oda, and he loves to foreshadow stuff. It just, when you think about it, that could be what that scene means, when Luffy dodged Mihawk's attack. It's because he was tapping into hockey, observation hockey, and that's how he dodged, I and mean, that's what Luffy's going to try to get into 
in this, you know, upcoming round two with Kata Curry. So, yeah, let's get right into that. So, Rayleigh. Ray Rayleigh's in this chapter. Well, a brief little flashback, obviously, but anytime this man is in a chapter, you should probably expect the chapter to be, like, quality. You, you should automatically expect the chapter to be straight fire. You're hyping up because you know things are about to go down because Rayleigh's just a great character, one of my personal favorites, and just seeing this man in the chapter, even though it's a flashback and Luffy's remembering what he was saying, that was epic because Luffy's like, like, I, I need to be able to, like, beat this man. I need to be able to see into the future. I'm like, yo, this is epic. Like, I, I, I can't imagine how cool that's going to be. But if Luffy is starting to step into this territory to where he can actually see into the future, we know for a fact there's probably going to be crazier other people out there with hockey, observation hockey, that probably can see even further into the future than even Kata Curry himself. So, I am excited. I'm very excited. But for now, though, that final part of the chapter... Oda, you're making me hot right now. I want to see. I want to see how Luffy is going to gain this. I, I can't wait to see him going up against Katakuri once again and how he can stand up and all that. But I do love the information about hockey, though. How you need to be in a, a very dire situation to be able to grow yourself. Because this also explains what happened with Usopp. Let's just back up real quick, okay? It's clear as day that Oda is a very good writer. He's had a lot of things planned out, and he plans out for long periods of time. I mean, with me re-watching the One Piece anime, I have definitely seen... That, you know, Oda is a master at, you know, just setting things up for hundreds upon hundreds of chapters into the future. He's great at that. And in this case, it's very apparent that the Usopp stuff in Dres Rosa, when he was, you know, trying to fight, uh, what, what, what's her name, uh, Sugar? Was it Sugar? I think her name is Sugar. It, it's been a while and all that. And, but basically, when Usopp used his, like, you know, uh, hockey, he, he was able to just progress in a way that we'd never seen before, and he took her out. And in that moment, everybody got hyped up, but there is a likely possibility since Usopp was under so much stress, and he could make a mistake. If one mistake, it would cost everybody's life. That might have been why he grew as a hockey user in that moment. Very similar to what's going on with Luffy and what is probably going to happen being under a lot of stress. So that right there, very interesting. Uh, it's very apparent that Oda was building this up for a while. Anyways, let's get into the uh, Sanji and Pudding stuff. So... I think all of you by now know how I feel about Pudding and Sanji. I, I love it. I, I love their interactions. I love how she's been acting. And I ship the two. I, it's not the main important thing when it comes to this series. I know ships aren't important. That's not something you should focus on. But I ship those two. And once again after this chapter, I can't help but just ship them even more. Because when Sanji went in to save Chiflin and all that. And he kicked Oven. And you see how he moved so fast and nobody really saw him, you saw Pudding, her eyes were straight hearts. Like, she had a nosebleed and all that. She was just getting all happy. I'm like, okay, yeah, she saw Sanji what he did. And I'm just like, that's adorable. It's straight adorable, but it kind of bugs me in a way. You want to know why it bugs me? Because the more I look at this, the more I realize that there's a very likely possibility that Pudding is not going to join the Straw Hats. She's probably not going to continue journeying on with the Straw Hats because let's think about Boa Hancock. Boa Hancock is very similar to Pudding in a way. I mean... Well, Hancock loves Luffy. We don't see her traveling with Luffy. Now, granted, she does have a complicated situation. She is a warlord, and she does live on Amazon Lily, so she doesn't have a lot of freedom to do whatever she wants, and I can understand that, but the same can be said for Pudding, in a way. I mean, she is restricted. She is a part of a Yonko crew, and she's very important for Big Mom's overall goals, so she's restricted as well, but it, it just it makes me remember that Pudding most likely... She is not going to be with the Straw Hats. Once this arc is done, she might retain that love for Sanji, and they probably will end up together at the end of the series. That might happen, but I don't see her possibly journeying with the Straw Hats, which sucks, because I would really love to have more of her, especially seeing her fight with Sanji and all that. That would be epic. It, it would be legit epic, but I doubt it's going to happen. Anyways, though, let's talk about the, uh, the scene with Oven. So, Oven, he got wrecked. He legit got wrecked by Sanji. Now... Granted, Oven didn't see Sanji coming. He didn't know Sanji was there, and so you could factor that in. He just got sideswiped in the side. He he didn't even see it coming, which makes a lot of sense. Even then, though, when Sanji hit the man, it looked like the man's arm was about to just break off. That, that That's how bad it looked. Like, Sanji hit this man really hard. He went flying. Now, he did get back up, so it wasn't like an instant knockout KO, but 
Even then, though, Sanji did a lot of damage. He went in so fast that Oven wasn't even able to see him, which shows that Sanji is at a very high level. But then it also shows that how crazy Katakuri is compared to Oven, and also just how ridiculous maybe Doffy is, and also Gear, you know, fourth as well, for Sanji to be able to do what he did to Oven in this chapter. So just crazy stuff all around, just to see how Sanji was able to do that. Go so fast, hit the man, he didn't even see it, and it looked like Pound did something, and then Pound got pounded, and... Yeah, but even then, though, just what Sanji did, that was incredibly impressive. Just, whoa. Just, whoa. It's clear as day that Oven might not be that strong compared to, you know, uh, Sanji. So, yeah, that's about it. I, I think that relatively is about it. I oh, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. There there's one more thing to discuss, actually. Let's talk about Carrot. So, Carrot mentions a full moon in this chapter. So, I don't know if I'm forgetting anything. I might be, and if I am... Correct me, okay? I, you know, I forget things. They're, they're, I I read a lot, I watch a lot of stuff, and I do tend to forget some details. So if I am forgetting anything, correct me in the comments for what I'm about to say. But I believe the full moon, this is the first time we've heard about a full moon, like, I'm assuming affecting the mink tribe. Because that's the way she was talking about it, it made me assume that she was going to, like, turn into, a, a, like, a wear bunny or something. That's what I was assuming by that combo. Now, if I'm forgetting something clarify in the comments please do so if i'm wrong and if it has been you know explained and i'm forgetting about it you know let me know in the comments seriously i make mistakes but seriously let me know but uh yeah if, if that really is a thing i'm very curious what that's gonna do i mean what type of uh role is that gonna play in the upcoming uh plot with big mom and all that i'm very curious i wonder if uh if she does transform in any way thanks to a full moon that's what i'm assuming I wonder if it's anything similar to, like, how Chopper is. You know, when he went into this, like, savage beast mode a long time ago? I wonder if, uh, if the Mink Tribe is capable of that. Or if it's only Carrot that's capable of that. We'll have to see. But that's about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you all so much. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please leave a like. I love you guys. Please be safe. Chibi out.